Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be solving a factorial equation. We have n factorial equals n cubed minus n and we're looking for integer solutions. I'll be presenting two methods. Let's start with the first one. First methods, okay. Two methods, but first method is a method, right? Okay. So my first method basically involves, and it's going to be the same thing for second method, so we're going to turn this into a nicer equation. Let's go ahead and expand n factorial and write it as n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 factorial. And on the right-hand side, we have n times the quantity n squared minus 1. Now, the reason why I expanded all the way down to n minus 2 factorial is I'm going to be able to factor n squared minus 1 using difference of two squares, and then I'll simplify it. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and expand the right-hand side by using difference of two squares. We can write this as n times n minus 1 times n plus 1. So here, n times n minus 1 cancels out. We can go ahead and cancel these out. And we end up with a nicer, much nicer equation. n minus 2 factorial equals n plus 1. Now, at any point, if you have a factorial equation, you can just plug in some numbers. At this point, it's probably a little easier uh, because you know that the factorials uh, you, know, you know, is going to grow faster than a polynomial. But uh, we want to find some upper bound for this. So for that purpose, uh, we're going to check a couple things here. So if n is greater than 5, consider the n minus 2 factorial. It is going to have, obviously, uh, n minus 2 as a factor, right? n minus 2 factorial has n minus 2 3 and 2 as factors, right? So now why am I writing this down? Because I want to compare n minus 2 factorial to n plus 1. And for certain values, when n gets larger, uh, obviously, for example, if n is like 8, fa 8, let's say n equals 8, 8 minus 2 is 6, 6 factorial is definitely going to be greater. But I want to find an upper bound uh, for this one. So Here's what we're going to do. Since n is greater than 5, I can just write it as 2n minus n is greater than 5. And then I'd like to turn this into something that I can kind of manipulate. So I'm going to write it as uh, 2n is uh, greater than n plus 5. And then 2n minus 4 is greater than n plus 1. Here we go. So by subtracting, so okay, by putting the n on the other side and then subtracting 4 from both sides, I was able to get n plus 1 on the right-hand side. And now I can factor out the 2 and write this as 2 times n minus 2 is greater than n plus 1. Great. So now, since we do know that 2 times n minus 2 is greater than n plus 1, and we also know that n minus 2 factorial has definitely n minus 2, 2, and 3 as factors, so that means it's going to be greater than this one. So we can write the following inequalities. n minus 2 factorial is greater than 2 times n minus 2 because obviously the one on the left hand side has more factors and they're all positive and this is going to be greater than n plus 1. Great. So now remember our equation was n minus 2 factorial equals n plus 1 but we notice that if n is greater than 5 then our the left hand side of the equation is going to be greater than the right hand side therefore they can never be equal. So from here we get the conclusion or result n minus 2 factorial is greater than n plus 1 if n is greater than 5. That means that there are no solutions for n values that are greater than 5. So we're going to be looking for values that are less than or equal to 5. So let's go ahead and test them out. So this is our equation that we're testing, n minus 2 factorial equals n plus 1. Suppose n equals 2. Okay, if n is equal to 2, then you're going to get 0 factorial equals 2 plus 1. Obviously, that is false, right? 3 does not equal 1. Okay, n equals 3 is going to give you 1 factorial equals 3 plus 1. 1 factorial is 1 and 3 plus 1 is 4. Again, that is not going to work. How about n equals 4? 2 
factorial equals four plus one. Obviously five is not a factorial, we know that. Two factorial is two, this is false as well. So now the last value, hopefully we're gonna get something from here, n equals five, is gonna give us five minus two factorial, which is three factorial, equals five plus one, and five plus one is six, as you know, and three factorial is also six. See, when you simplify it, it's a little easier to check. So this checks, which means n equals five is a solution. But guess what? That is the only solution because we noticed that n is greater than five is not gonna give us any solutions. Cool, let's go ahead and take a look at the second method, okay. Second method is definitely shorter, obviously. The first method is always more painful, right? So I'm gonna pick up where we simplified, you know, our expression. We don't have to go through that again, right? Now, at this point, notice that n equals two it's kind of easy to see, right? It's not a solution, right? Okay, great. So that means we can divide both sides by n minus two. Now we divided sort of, you know, to simplify this, we divided the original equation by n times n minus one, but we can, sim uh, we can divide more. Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, since n equals two is not a solution, that means our solution is gonna be greater than n equals two, remember? So, Let's go ahead and divide this by both sides, I should say, by n minus two. Great. And now when you expand this, this is gonna become n minus two times n minus three factorial. Of course, this is true for n values that are greater than two, right? It's gonna give us the following. Now n minus two cancels out and we end up with another factorial. And obviously for n values that are greater than or equal to three, this is an integer. So n minus three factorial is an integer Therefore, the right-hand side also needs to be an integer. How do you write this as an integer? Well, I can kind of manipulate the numerator, and this is a common technique that we use, you know, just change the numerator. So I'm writing the n plus one as n minus two plus three, so to make it look like the denominator. And then from here, I can kind of break it down and write this as n minus three quantity factorial, or n minus three factor, whatever, is equal to now. I'm going to split it up into two pieces. So n minus two divided by n minus two is just going to be one, right? And the rest is gonna be three divided by n minus two. Notice that we said this is an integer, right? Z is the set of integers. So how can this be an integer? Well, n minus two must be a factor of three or a divisor of three, right? So in other words, n minus two divide, we could also use the symbol three. But um, in order for n minus two to divide three, n must be either three or five. But if n is equal to three, you're gonna get from here, you're gonna get one plus one, which is two, and on the left-hand side, you're gonna get one factorial, right? Or zero factorial, rather. So n equals three is not gonna work, and we are left with the only solution, n equals five, and it actually does work. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.